Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what it's like to be a new player in Epic 7 in 2023. Epic 7 is now actually celebrating its five year anniversary. This game has been out for a quite a long time in terms of, you know, how old mobile gacha games are, and it is still extremely popular and a ton of people still play it. So me personally, I have never actually played Epic 7. So this is my first time finally actually giving this game a try. Anyway, I want to take a look at this game to see how it is for the new player experience and whether or not you guys should give it a try as well. And also this video is sponsored by Epic 7, but as usual with my sponsorships, I just give you a quick tour or just my opinions on the game and we're going to take a quick look at it together. There's a lot of stuff to do in Epic 7. It can feel pretty overwhelming for a new player to get started. What I found is that Epic 7 actually has a pretty solid system for introducing new players to what they should be doing. For new players, there is actually a ton of stuff, including all these different growth things that allow you to just claim a ton of rewards. And each of these growth things, or well, a lot of them will teach you to do a mission, a useful mission for actually powering up your characters and account. And also we have this little fire wing icon, which indicates that right now we have a bunch of EXP, a bunch of gold. We just have a lot of bonuses for new players. And right here, this is a really useful one where we can enter the spirit altars for all elements for the first 14 days or so. On top of that, there's just so many things for new players right now. We also have this seven day growth guide. By the time we actually reach the last one right here, we will be able to get this thing, which is a five star hero summon ticket, which for those that are unaware, five star heroes are the highest rarity. And on top of all that, we even have an infinite summon system where you are able to just keep summoning over and over where you're guaranteed one five star and a certain number of four stars until you get the five star of choice. Me personally, I ended up going with a Destina. She was the five star that I chose because she is also a healer as well as a waifu. So those two things combined for me is enough for me to actually, you know, uh, go forward with choosing a character like her. Still, you know, ultimately I am a waifu over meta player when it comes to any games that I play. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> speaking of which right now is actually an incredible time to start playing. And it's also why Epic Seven has been doing a big campaign push right now. You've probably seen some streamers and stuff been talking about this lately. But right now we have the Moonlight's Blessing. The Moonlight's Blessing Season 2 is part of the Ezron Foundation Day. Usually it's really hard to get a Moonlight hero, so this is a once in a who knows how long time opportunity. Although us new players are going to be playing Season 1 like myself, it's possible to actually get two free Moonlight heroes if we reach Season 2. Anyway, the Ezron Foundation Day also grants us 11 free summons per day for 10 days for a total of 110 free summons from August 31st to September 28th. So now really is the perfect time to play Epic 7 if it's a game that's been on your radar. Also, as part of the Ezron Foundation Day, there's a 14 day daily check in event where you'll get a five star artifact selector on the seventh day and a five star covenant hero selector on the 14th day completely for free. The five star covenant hero will provide a huge boost to your account. So what is this Moonlight's Blessing? Well, you are able to select pretty much one of the most OP characters in the game and you will be able to get them completely for free. And out of these characters, you know, these are the ones that you have options for. We have <laughs> this Omega Waifu. We have uh, this interesting guy who has uh, shiny hands and we have this really cool looking knight dude um, you love to see the different variety of characters that you can collect. You know, it's always great to have games that actually do just, you know, branch off of the generic husbandos and waifus, not to say that these designs are generic because as much of a waifu player I am, this guy absolutely looks pretty awesome. But for me, I think I'm going to go with the thumbs up waifu here, the Spectre Tenebra. Now, me, I'm not familiar with the meta or how good any of these characters are. I'm just gonna be completely honest about that. Based on purely design, I would say I like her more. 
But if we look at the hero rating, my goodness, 2.6. That's uh, that's uh, pretty atrocious. I guess the community is able to rate these heroes. And we can see here that she's been rated pretty highly. And her 1.2. 1, 1 oh, oh my goodness, that poor character. So this cool looking guy has a pretty solid rating as well. But for me, I'm going to pick the waifu with a good rating as well. So we're going to go with the um, Spectre to Nibra. So the way that they actually give these heroes out is really cool and innovative in my opinion. But basically we can see here that we do have these unlock missions which might take like a new player like myself um, quite some time. I'm not really sure how long it's going to take. But all these do look viable to accomplish eventually. However, that doesn't mean that I can't actually use her because I can. not I actually have her in my character roster. I leveled her up a bit. I've equipped her with some gear and I've used her a couple times. But really completing those missions is mainly so I can use her in certain game modes like World Arena, Ancient Inheritance, or a defense team for Arena and Guild War. And right now I'm not really worried about that stuff because I'm just progressing through the story and leveling and farming up for my characters. So these game modes aren't that imperative for me to use her. And so it's really cool that I'm able to use her immediately and now for all the game modes that I actually do need her in and then eventually once I complete those missions I'll be able to throw her in the more PvP oriented stuff. So another really awesome game mode Epic 7 added recently ish back in July is draft mode in World Arena. And what the draft mode is, it's a game mode where it's a PvP, but it's a drafting PvP game mode where you're actually able to use any character that you want. And all those characters will have the maximum level of grade, memory imprint, skill enhancement, all that stuff that usually is just reserved for whales. So free to play players that eventually level up their account enough, they can participate in this draft mode on an equal playing field against everyone else and actually test their skill and not just their wallet. I think that's a really cool bone that they threw to the community that really wants to enjoy PvP. So one thing that's really crazy that Epic Seven is doing is they're actually holding the Epic Seven World Arena Championship. That's right, it's an actual tournament of competitive Epic Seven with some real prize money on the line. Last year's Epic Seven World Championship had 4,500 people compete, which is absolutely insane. That's a huge amount of players. And the prize pool is a whopping 100,000 US dollars, which is really awesome to see. It's great to see like people that do take this game seriously from a competitive standpoint are able to, you know, actually have some real cash winners here. And it's not too late to actually catch it because as we can see, the main match round one is going to be on September 9th. Hopefully this video will be out by then. But if not, you'll definitely be able to catch the upper bracket final rounds, which is going to be on September 23rd. So very cool to see that Epic 7 is hosting actual tournaments with actual prize money on the line for their community. You love to see it. So yeah, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to check out Epic 7. So far, the free-to-play experience has been a bit overwhelming, but also very enjoyable at the same time. I really appreciate how we're able to pick an initial cast of rare heroes to play through the story with, including the Moonlight Blessing hero, and I do plan to casually play this game for some time and to check out the Epic 7 World Championship. Be sure to smash that link down below as this game is completely free to play, full of high quality husbandos and waifus, and has a promising past, present, and future. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.